morning. Good morning. Well, it's just, it's just a crying shame Alan didn't hear because he would not believe the fact that y'all just hushed. <laughs> <laughs> and we didn't say, and didn't say a word. You just. Oh, sure. <laughs> Well, as you noticed, Alan's not here. He's uh, he's covering another class. Somebody got called into work and couldn't do the class they were supposed to do, so he's filling in. So you're stuck with me today. Okay. Well, that's good, except that what that means is, I hope you understand, that means that I expect a whole lot of class participation. I've got I've got to focus over here because if I focus over here I'll I'll just be too tickled. Okay. Uh, real quick, small group Bible studies continue tonight at six o'clock, and they will continue through June first. Uh, we're taking up the love offering for uh, CPC in honor of Mother's Day to purchase the additional equipment. This is uh, what the preacher talked about the other day. So. Yeah, so so give as you as you feel led. What is it? It's a, it's 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 not a machine, it's an addition to the machine that we we helped them purchase. The sock, whatever it is. It's another piece of equipment that goes along with it. Uh folk? <laughs> Yeah, I know. And if I say anything, I'll pay for it later. So. We're interested. Uh, they're still requesting photos with Mom. If you have not turned those in, today's the deadline. It wouldn't be fair to Pastor Tickle for you to give it to him any later because he's already swamped. So if you have not sent in photos with Mom, please do so. That is, That also includes men. It's not just the ladies. If you have a mom, they would like a picture of you and her. Mother's Day will be a family worship service and there will be no PM activities. That's next Sunday. Jesus and Girl Stuff shopping trip to Liberty Trade Days and more Saturday, May the 20th. We'll be departing from the church on the bus at 9 a.m. and return roughly around 2 o'clock. Central High, Central Students, High School Senior Sunday is May 21st. Central Students Camp is July 2nd through the 6th, 2023. If you're interested in that or have somebody who wants to go, look at your bulletin. There's a uh, code on the bulletin. And the Mark Lowry Hometown Weekend will be here in October the 13th and 14th. Same thing, look at your bulletin. There's a scan code for that. Um, just when you go in and look at it, there's, there's three sets of tickets you could buy. One is a VIP package. One is a three-day package, all three shows, and then you can buy them individually. So just pay attention when you select to make sure you get what you want. Um, I don't know if Alan received any prayer requests. Remember last week he said, if you have a prayer request, send it in to him and we'll, 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 we'll do it. Uh, first of the deal, so he's not here, so I don't know if he received any. Uh, I did send him one that, that would I'd like to pray for is a, a good friend of ours. Um, kind of it's a pretty sad story. She she has been diagnosed with leukemia. They're telling her that there's not just a whole lot they can do for her, and on top of that, her husband has gone downhill with. Uh, Dementia or Alzheimer's. So it's just, it's just a real sad situation right now. But she fell the other day and must have fallen pretty good because she spent three days in the hospital. So uh, you need prayers for that. So, Tony, why don't you pray for us, brother? Uh, Brad, my surgery's been moved up to 7 on uh, Wednesday instead of 9. So just okay. Remember me at 7. Okay, you all remember that? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for another day in your house, Lord. Uh, we come to you this morning, Lord, where we're seeking wisdom. <coughs> Jesus. We, we want
want to be in your word. Uh, bless our hearts, bless our minds, bless the teachers, bless those that were not able to be here, Lord Jesus, they could get a touch from you, Lord. Uh, whatever healing or whatever touch people need, Lord Jesus, just uh, let the Holy Spirit do its work. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. How many of you got something or someone you like to brag on? I was going to say, for most of us that have grandkids, we, first and foremost, it's going to be them. But who are we also real bad about bragging on? Our kids. Hmm? Ourselves. Ourselves. We're always, we're always wanting to keep up with the Joneses. And you, you look what I did. Look what I accomplished. You know, hey, I just got a promotion at work and, you know, Oh, fuck my chest. Look what I accomplished. And that's human nature to do that. But what are you doing when you do that? Praising yourself. Praising yourself. Taking away what God's done for you. Yep. You're putting yourself where? First. You're putting yourself first in front of God. And that's what this lesson, the, the title of the lesson is, a temptation to place something else in place of God. So we, we all have that tendency, Right. So, going into the promised land, Moses is, he's, the last couple of weeks, he's basically laying down a law to him going into the promised land, right? So he's doing the same thing this time. And then we're going to talk about the third temptation of Christ, which falls, <coughs> falls along with that. So, Les, can you read those? And it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought in thee unto the land unto my fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities, which thou buildest not, and houses full of good all good things, which thou fillest not, and wells dig, which thou diggest not, vineyards and olive trees, which thou plantest not, when thou shalt have eaten and be full. Then beware lest thou, for thou forget the Lord which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Why do we have everything we have? God gave it to us. Who does it, who's it belong to? So we're just renting it. Everything. Right? In these passages, Moses is telling them when the first promise was made to Abraham, what did he pro what was the promise? What did he promise him? What was Canaan? Promised promise land. He promised him land. Here Moses is saying, Well, you're not just going to get the land. Throughout the Old Testament, when the Israel went in and took over someplace, what did they do? They wiped out everything. People, land, housing. It was all knocked to the ground, destroyed. And then once it was destroyed and taken over, then they rebuilt and replanted and, and, and started all over again, right? Well, what Moses is saying here is they, they don't, you don't have, you're not going to do that. You're going to go in and take over the land. And you're going to take over everything that is already there. So you're not going to have to plant vineyards. They're already there. You're not going to have to dig wells. It's already done. You're not going to have to build houses. They're already there. So what, by, by doing that, what is that, what's that indicating? What's the Lord doing? He's taking care of them. He's taking care of them. He's taking care of them. By His grace, He's increasing what He's going to give them. The... The, the, it's, it, there's a word called shamar. And shamar is, is, uh, means pay careful attention to. And, and it, what Mo, Moses is, is, is trying to beat home in the last two or three lessons that we've done is 
Don't forget. Sorry. Was this somebody was at the front door? I was just looking. Your wife. Not me. So what he's trying. I got no control. I have no control. What, so what he's doing is he's beating into them. Don't forget where you came from. Yeah. Don't, don't forget who gave you what you have. And we need to remember the same thing. You know, I didn't have a house already made and ready and everything for me to move into, but I have a house. I had a job that gave me money to buy a car. Where did that all come from? By the grace of God. And that's what he's telling Moses is telling them. Now you're going to be tempted. You're going to go into this land and you've got everything you need already handed to you on a silver platter. Don't forget who gave it to you. Don't start thumping your chest like you've done something because you did absolutely nothing. The only thing that you need to do is remain faithful to him and put him first. And that's what he's saying in these verses. Don't forget who gave it to you. And he, he listed all the things you're going to get. And remember that he's the one that brought you out of Egypt. He's the one that brought us out of everything. And y'all ain't never this quiet. <laughs> this is almost scary. <coughs> Tony, can you read that? Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God and serve him and shalt swear by his name. Ye shall not go after other gods of the gods of the people which are round about you. For the Lord thy God is a jealous God among you, lest the anger of the Lord thy God be kindled against thee and destroy thee from off the face of the earth. That's pretty powerful. Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> pretty much ties it all up in a nutshell, doesn't it? He gave, Moses given them three points for leading a religious life. The first point is, fear the Lord thy God. Now, he's not saying you should be scared to death of God. What, what does he mean by fear? Reverence. Reverence. Respect. Uh, huh? Yeah, but fear the Lord thy God. Remember who he is. Remember what he's done. Everything that you have was because of him, because he is a good and mighty and just God. Therefore, he demands our respect. In any, even, even with, with kings on earth, we, you, human nature is you, you tend to fear the person that's in authority. You, and, it, and here again, it may not be fear of what they may do or something, but it's respect for, for authority, given, it, given it's the right authority. But God's saying the same thing. He should be first and foremost above everything. The second point he's making for living a religious life is to serve him. It's not enough to just sit here and say that you believe and, 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 and try to do the things that you're supposed to do, but you're supposed to serve Him. And how do we serve God? This is your part. <laughs> what? Okay. Serving God can be any number of things, right? Okay. Serving other people. Serving other people. What does He want you to do? Spare the gospel. Love thy neighbor as you would love yourself. Treat everybody that same way. Serving doesn't mean you have to necessarily do something in church. It's great if you do serve in church. But serving can be anywhere. It's, it's called having a servant attitude. It's not about me. It's not about me trying to make myself better in front of you. It's about me making sure you have what you need. 
you know, I've always heard as, as, as a supervisor and a leader when I was at work that it's, it's not about you. It's, about, it's what you do with the people around you and how successful you make them is a direct reflection on you. So if you make everybody around you better in some way, that's a reflection on you. And once again, you're not putting yourself in front of anything. You're not putting yourself before anybody. The third thing is, swear by his name. And it's just, it's, swear by his name is an oath of allegiance. It's just saying that, that I know who you are. I know what you are. I know where I stand with you. And I will give you the reverence that I'm supposed to give you. And I will serve you. You'll do all the things the first two steps said. And you, you'll do that and you'll not put anything else before him. No false idols. See, Moses was telling them, when you go into this land, there's going to be all kinds of stuff around you. There's going to be all kinds of idol worship and everything else. You can't have that. And there was nothing in here about, and he didn't say anything about destroying old altars or anything. He didn't say anything about destroying anything. So there's going to be some things left in the land that, that are representative of things that you're not supposed to work in. Remember who you are and remember where you came from. <coughs> this is the point he's trying to make. And he's trying to, for if you think about the last three lessons or four lessons that we've had now, he's telling them the same thing as, it's, it's like the uh, adult learning process says if you, when you want somebody to remember something, you make them repeat it four times. And, you know, it's, this is about the fourth time that Moses is beating into them. Remember where you came from. Remember who got you here and why he put you here. Why is he doing all this for them? Because he promised Deuteronomy uh, means second law. Uh, Deutero uh, Deuteros, the second, and nomos is the law. And it doesn't mean that it's a second law. It means it's the second giving of the law. Right. we got to remember why, when it is. It's after the 40 years that they've been wandering in the desert. And he's giving it to a group of people <coughs> who are some not born and some who are very, very young or, you know, some not alive, some very young when the first law was given. So he's telling them, you know, this is the law that was given to your parents and your grandparents, many of who are, don't exist anymore. And uh, he's refreshing them. He's reminding them. And it's about the looking back and uh, the, sh the Shema, the verse four through nine, it starts with verse 4, and that is verse that uh, people who are in the Jewish faith, it's a verse they, they learn that first verse when they're very, very young, you know, one of the first things they ever learn. And it's, Hero Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And that's, that comes out here in this place because they're getting ready to go into Canaan, where everybody there worships many, many gods. And it's, it's, it's stressing the point. Your God, the God, is one God. So to keep them focused, when you start seeing all these people worshiping many gods, keep in mind, you have one God. And that's like the beginning of the whole thing. And then he goes in and he's reminding them of the law that he taught that, you know, was given to his, their ancestors. And so it's the second giving of the law. That's Deuteronomy. You know, that's what that means. And just in case somebody didn't know what that meant. So what, if you remember a couple of lessons back, what's, what's one of the things that we're supposed to do from generation to generation to generation? He's supposed to pass it off. So what's Moses doing here? They've been, in, they've been in the wilderness 40 years. That generation is pretty much gone. And he knows he's not going to go. And he knows he's not going with them. Yeah. So it's the second, like Danny says, the second giving, and it's it's doing what we're told to do is to, re to repeat it to our sons and daughters and their sons and daughters and so on and so forth. 
we should all be doing exactly what Moses is doing with the people getting ready to go into Canaan. It, it's, it reminds me of the story of way back whenever I first started really got saved young, but then later as I matured, got more into God's work about, and you know, I begin to question how in the world could those people, everything that God did to them, turn, you know, do, do what they did. And then you put it into today's realm and you start thinking about, mm, I would never do that. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm. yeah, it's it's the same thing. <coughs> you've got what you have today because of him. He's given you everything you've got. And it may not be thousands of acres of land or whatever, but everything you have came through him. Like you like you say, we're just soldiers here. We're just here for a short time. This is not our place. And so everything we've got you know the phrase you can't take it with you no everything you've got stays here because you're just renting it for a while you're, you're renting everything you've got everything stays here when you leave it's just a temporary thing for the Lord thy God is a jealous God among you a jealous God really jealous It's not the kind of jealous they're talking about. Uh -huh. Not 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 the jealous of me being jealous over my spouse from somebody or something like that. He's jealous over us because he wants us to be we're his. We're his and only his. <coughs> and he and the phrase be the, the Lord thy God be kindled against thee and destroy thee from off the face of the earth. I don't, when I first read that, it's like, well, if you keep messing up, there's a bolt of lightning going to come down and just take you out. No. But if you keep living a life you're not supposed to live, then thing, things are not going to go your way. Things are going to change. Uh, things that you have today, you may not have after today to the point where you could almost be non-existent even though you're still here. So he's a jealous God. He wants you, he's, he's giving you all these things. He has a right to be jealous of you. I'm giving you all this. Why would you look somewhere else? Why would, why would you look to something else when I've given you all of this? It all came from me. And he's reminding them of, 40 years in the wilderness, all the things that God gave you. He's, he's given you everything you needed to survive to this point. And now he's fixing to put the cherry on top. He's fixing to give you the promised land and everything that's in it. So you can start off anew with everything you need. You don't have to have to start from, from root beginnings. He, he, knows, he knows what's good for us. We may not. Yeah, boy, <laughs> proved that to me a whole bunch of times. I know that's all. Take the example of manna. Huh? Take the example of manna. He gave it to him every day. He knew he was going to give it to him. And there were people out there trying to collect some extra. And every time they did, it just went right. bad. It just right. Yeah. Give to me my daily yeah. bread. Depend on him for everything. You don't try to. Take it, do it yourself. Yeah. You know? And once they got it, you see the promise land. The man is stopped. Yeah. Yeah. Because, why, and why did it stop? <laughs> because they've got everything they need. Yeah. He's given them everything. He's done it all along. Mm -hmm. It may not have been what they wanted. I might have wanted a ribeye every day. But he gave me what I needed. To survive. They were living under judgment. They were still getting their provisions, but it was a different kind of provision because they were living under judgment. Now they received the promise and everything looked better, but they were they were just being provided for in a different way. He still took care of them even under judgment. And that's what we forget a lot of times. We're going through hard times, we're going through troubles. It looks like it's the end of things, but 
He's still providing for us. It, it, we don't see it sometimes, but he's still providing for us. A lot of times you don't see it till you look back on it. Yes. Yeah. yes. Hindsight is twenty twenty. And I can't tell you the number of times I've looked back and went, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, okay, <laughs> got it, <laughs> you know, got it, I understand, so, so, these next verses, this is the third temptation, third, I guess I ought to quit covering my mouth, it's the third temptation of Christ, and uh, Danny, can you read that? It might be a little tough with the background I got on it. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showing him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And saith unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship thee, Lord thy God, Worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Becky, look up um, Isaiah 9, 7. And Tony, would you look up Daniel 7, 13 and 14? Sorry, I should have gave you all those ahead of time. Do what? Well you, well, you fixing to fixing to find out why? Isaiah nine seven. Isaiah nine seven. And what about Daniel? Daniel seven thirteen and fourteen. Okay. You got it, Becky. Uh -huh. Of the increase of his government and the peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom, and an order it and to establish it with judgment with, and with justice from henceforth. Even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Okay. Tony? <clears throat> I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. And there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion <coughs> which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. Well, what are those verses telling us? Well, what's the devil, what's the devil offering? He's already got it. It's he's already just offering a quicker route. To well, yeah. this was he's offering him a quicker route, but what is he also asking to avoid? The cross. The cross. He already he already has <clears throat> dominion over everything. It's already been promised to him. The verses. He don't need that. He don't need any of it. And it just seems. Why would he, why would he offer <coughs> something he already has? He's trying. He's trying to. If he could get him to accept it, then he don't go to the cross. If you don't go to the cross, what happens? We got salvation. We've you've lost your salvation. Right. When he came to earth in the form of a man. He had a job, a ministry, whatever you want to call it. He knew when he came here what was going to happen. He knew what had to happen. And nothing was going to deter him from that. Whether it was the three temptations of the devil, uh, persecution, any of that. He wasn't, he couldn't. He couldn't allow it to change his mind. Because if any piece of it got left out, there goes your salvation. There goes, there goes everything that we, 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 we believe in. 
that we believe in that we've got in here in the book. <coughs> so it, it the devil is really good about showing you temptation and showing you all the good things that you can get. Let me show you. Let me let me show you what you can have. Let me, but he doesn't tell you the underlying things. Um, and that's what we are, or what we become, Brad, is that we don't want to delay gratification right. at all. No well, problem. Instant gratification. We don't want it tomorrow or next year or whatever. We want it now. Yeah, how, how many, and I, I hate using movies as an example, <laughs> but how many movies have you seen where you well, let's make a deal with the devil? That's right. And it never turns out good. Right. No. I, first thing that jumped in my mind, and y'all may not, I, there was a movie, it's called Ghost Rider. Oh, yeah. And, and Ghost Rider, he's, he, he makes a deal with the devil to save his, save his father's life and ends up his father dies anyway, and he's cursed. Yep. It's the same, it's the same principle. The devil will show you, he'll tempt you and show you all the wonderful things you could have or the, oh, look at this shiny object over here. Wouldn't you love to have that? But he doesn't tell you what underlying problems come along with that shiny thing that he's offering you. So you, you, you've got to be aware of that. You've got to be, be careful with that. If you follow the three principles that Moses laid out of living a religious life, get in this, know this, then that temptation, it's, it's easier to resist the temptation. I think, Brian, one of the neatest things about that scripture that we read in Matthew 1, that, or, yeah, thank you, no, whatever it said, was where when Satan left, that the angel came and ministered to him. He could have sent people, but God sent his angels. I think that's just awesome. Well, you stop and think about this, and, and Alan said it, I think he said it last week. You know that the angels, because that's their job. Angels are beings created by God to do certain things. They serve, they minister to Him, they minister to us, they, they, do, they wage battle, okay? But you know that the angels, they got to be up there wringing their hands going, He's starving to death. In 40 days, He's not eating anything. The devil's just wearing on, wearing on Him, and they just... I can just see Michael and, Michael and Gabriel stand, stand, standing there going, just cut me loose. Just let me go. And But it can't happen. It has to happen the way it, it happens. It was interesting if you, it says in, in the verse it says the devil leaveth him. In the lesson it says that Jesus banished him away from him. There is a big difference. One is the devil left on his own. The other one is he said, get away from me. That was the first time of the three that he did that. Right. He, get away from me. He was done. It's over. It is done. Go away. And once that all was done, you've got to remember, all of this is in the plan. This is all in the plan. And as soon as he told him to go away, there they came. He has to obey. Yeah. You, he, you had to, and then so the, so as soon as the devil's gone, he had to listen to him. When he said, "Get away from me," it's just like you and me. The devil cannot read our minds. That's right. I, omniscient is that it? Omniscient. Yeah. He don't have that. That's one of them ten dollar words I have trouble with. <laughs> he can't read your mind. He doesn't know your thoughts. So when the devil's tempting you and beating on you hard verbally verbally tell him to get away from you try it sometimes it works just get away I've done it a couple I've done it and there's a difference there's a difference when you verbally let it go and you verbally say Get away from me. It seems to work better. Well, and if you're saying it in your mind, it just kind of keeps lingering around, lingering around, lingering around. Get away. I'm done. I got nothing. I have nothing for you. You have nothing for me. Go away. Be prepared in your heart. 
Be prepared in your heart so that uh, you can do it in God's name. <laughs> Otherwise, he's going to laugh at you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's so. why I think the key word in our lesson is remember. We have to remember these things so that we will verbally tell Satan to go away. And then there's constant, even as God teaches us, you know, he's teaching us remember what God's word says. Get into God's, God's word. But um, to me, that really was the key, is remembering who our God is and what he's capable of and what he has promised us. Yeah, and that's, and that's, and that's what Moses is doing, right? Mm -hmm. everything, everything Jesus did while he was here on earth was, was to teach us and give us examples, mm -hmm. right? Every, that, that was his, that wasn't his only purpose. But that was one of the things he was supposed to do while he's here. Teach us, give us examples. This is examples of how to tell the devil to leave you alone. Brad, you said a while ago the devil can't read your mind. If you're just in your mind telling him to leave, the devil can't read that. That's right. So the only way he can read it is why you have to speak it. Because he cannot know that in your head you just said go away. That's right. He does, he does not know what you, your thoughts can't know your thoughts. Only, only God does that. So you, you've got to verbalize it. You verbalize it. I have a question. If Satan can't read your thoughts, then how come bad thoughts go in your head? Because I don't get bad thoughts in my head. I'm instantly like, no, 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 no. <laughs> It's because, that's it's, a good angel and your bad angel? Yeah. <laughs> no. Well, you got one on each shoulder, right? <laughs> No, but we have a sin nature built That's into right. us. And try as we might, we have a sin nature built into us, and it's that sin nature that that makes you look at something and go, hmm. <laughs> and then it's the Holy Spirit that's tapping you on the back of the head that's telling you, mm -mm, you know better than that. So it's... This is the devil. He can't read your thoughts. He will tempt you. He'll lay stuff out in front of you. And, and it's up to you. It's, it's, it's like, I like cheesecake. And he could lay a cheesecake out in front of me and I go, oh, that looks really good. But then I walk away from it. There's no sin there. I saw it. I looked away. Turned away from it. So he'll lay that stuff out there for you. When you make the decision, when your, your sin nature makes a decision to go for whatever it is, that's where the sin happens. So the thoughts that come into your mind aren't the devil. That's your sin nature that he's playing on. He knows your weaknesses and he plays on that. Let them think what they want. It works for you, right? So, yeah, it's, it, just remember that. I mean, I don't. Even, I don't remember who finally it finally snapped with me one day that you have to say it. It's when I watched the war room. When I watched that, she was going around her kitchen and rebuking mm -hmm. Satan out the rooms and everything, and I was like, "Whoa, that's powerful." Yeah. That's when it became real. For me, it was really important. I heard this this week. Speak God to your darkness. Mm -hmm. There you go. There you go. So, I, it, here again, it's a lesson. It's, like Kim said, it's remember. Remember where you came from. He's, Moses is telling Israel, remember where you came from. You were in Egypt. You didn't have anything. You didn't own nothing. You didn't even own the clothes on your back. I brought you out of that. I taught you a lesson for 40 years. And now I'm fixing to give you more than you, your heart, everything your heart could desire. Remember where you came from. 
Think about yourself. You, you started off. I started off life as, as, as an adult. I got a, my first job. I, I bought things little by little and built things up. And I progressed in my job and started, got raises. And, and you, you work through things. Every bit of that that you get, you didn't do nothing for. You put in work for it. But you got it by the grace of God. He gave you the skills or he gave you the knowledge or whatever it was to allow you to have what you were getting. Okay? Anybody got anything else? It, it's coming to me to think too about I don't like some people, like sometimes you question that why, God, why did you, you know, do this? Do you understand how bad this hurts or this whatever? It, it, it always remember that there's nothing that you felt that he hasn't felt threefold. That, that was a point, and I'm glad you brought that up because that was a point I wanted to make. Everything he's going through, everything he goes through while he's on earth is for him to experience everything that we experience so that he does know how you feel. He does know how you react. He does know. He, and he can stand for you in the face of God, in the face of the Father. And he say, so, hey, cut him some slack. This is what he's going through. And it helps you to be able to, no matter what it is, to be able to forgive. Always forgive. Don't mean you have to forget. But you need to forgive. But you know, we know the world can't satisfy us. And yeah. our lesson, the last sentence of it, tells us that a life spent in worship and exaltation of the one who loves us deeply will always lead to satisfaction. Mm -hmm. That's where our satisfaction comes from. That's where our true satisfaction comes from. Danny, why don't you close us? Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this lesson that we've had today, Father. Thank you for the example that you've given us here that we can follow, Father. Lord, I ask you to be with the people that we, uh, that you know, you, you know their circumstances, the people that we brought for you, Father, and the ones that uh, we haven't and the ones that you know of their situation. We ask you, Lord, to be with us today. singers and musicians, Father, and be with the pastors. Brings a message. We ask you, Lord, that the Holy Spirit will move on the hearts of the people and that we will 